it is very difficult for all of us to watch 15 almost 15,000 people have died um, actually more than that if you count people have died and whose numbers have not yet been accounted for majority of them are children um, so any de-escalation is welcome. Mm. Any end of conflict is very welcome. I've been calling for a ceasefire from the day one. I've been calling for the release of hostage is for, from the day one. But did you know more than 7,000 Palestinians are in prison, in the Israeli prisons, unaccounted, untried, left behind bars to rot, and a large number of them are children. Um, so in the prisoner exchange and hostage exchange, while 50 Israeli uh, hostages will be returned. There will be 150 Palestinian prisoners will be returned. And out of the 150, 123 of them are children. It just, there is no moral ambiguity about the wrong of this. Whoever does it, it's wrong. We should not have to... Are you not surprised that the Israeli government have agreed to this? I'm, I'm not surprised because I think loss of life has been colossal on both sides. Palestinians have lost more than 12,000 people. 60% of them are children and women. They're innocent people, they've done nothing wrong. Israelis have lost huge amounts of people. And some of the numbers are not out yet. We don't know how many soldiers have died from the Israeli IDF. And I think every mother, just like a father I am, my heart cries out when I see any innocent child is being killed. When I see a child being held and the doctor is saying, I don't know whose child this is. I've just pulled him out of the rubbles. That breaks my heart, Ian. So any end of hostility is welcome. The only way forward, the only way forward is to end fighting, is to create an environment of peace and settlement. Yeah, end of which is very laudable, but it's totally unrealistic when you're dealing with a terror group who say that, well, OK, they seem to have agreed to a temporary ceasefire now, but many people in Israel will say, well, that's just so they can rearm themselves. Um, but in the end, you can't have an international peace treaty with a terror group, can so you? Let's understand yeah. that. The Hamas did not exist from 1948. They only came into being over the last 20 years. Why have they come to being, number one? Why do we have 2.3 million people living in a small strip of land? Where did they come from, number two? Number three, Hamas does not exist in West Bank. More than well, two. Does. No, it's not, not really. It's not in government. The government majority are by Fatah, right? More than 200 Palestinians have been killed in West Bank every day. Settler violence, demolishing of homes, confiscation of houses is happening even today. So, actually, let's not waste our time talking about Hamas, Fatah, none of that. I want to talk about what the Palestinians want. Do you know what they want? I've been to Palestine. I've been to Gaza. So have I. I've been to West Bank. And I've seen and I've sat with those people. They want an end to this hostility and violence. They want a side-by-side -side existence between their Jewish, Christian, Muslim neighbors, just like they did before. What's happened now is that international interference, international blind, blind support of one side over the other, whoever it is, is causing the trouble. Have we given the Palestinians a referendum? No. I'm saying Palestinians want an end to of all this. They want peace. They want end of occupation. They want end of illegal settlements to be uh, stop all of that. And then we will definitely find peace. Hamas is a reaction to occupation, illegal as it is, barbaric as their activities are, terrorists as our government has called them. It is still a reaction to a reality which is more than 75 years of occupation, dispossession, and a people who have been dehumanized. And that's not on, Ian. Uh, look, I, I, I agree with quite a lot of what you said, but you, you've missed out the Iranian element here. Iranians um, are meddling in Yemen, right? Well, let's, they're, they're meddling in a lot of places, let, but they, particularly, they, they, I mean, they, they created Hamas, let's face it, in, in 1988. And also uh, Israelis, because we know from facts that Israelis did not like uh, uh, Yasser Arafat in dealing with their politics, so they needed to find an alternative, so they funded creation of Hamas. Well, you, now they've created a monster that they can't control. Iranians are meddling in politics in Lebanon. Iranians are meddling in politics in, in Yemen. Iranians are meddling in politics in Syria and Iraq. All of those countries we have had a say over. Some of it has been our own colony, or some of them we have been doing proxy war via other people. The biggest problem we have is, is not only Iranians, our best friend, biggest arm buyer 
in Saudi Arabia. They're the worst when it comes to the Middle East politics. And you know, I don't support any of these dictators and despots. I want to see an end of all of this. I want to see democracy prevail. I want to see rule of law. I want to see people free to travel anywhere they want. I want to see an end of all of this. And it will end when we, Western world, the powerful one today, consistently apply rule of law, international law on everybody, and democracy and freedom for all people, and stop selling arms to the, the dictators and despots. Just because they do our bidding, they don't have to be buying our arms and killing innocent people. And this is why your mother's proud of you. Thank you. Linda. <laughs> I, I'm not sure I can actually follow that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to have to. 